So in this video we're going to be learning some simple reverse engineering techniques to reverse engineer a really simple Mac application to learn how it works, to see its internals and hopefully modify it to do something it wasn't built to do. This video is a follow on to the Windows version. The app we're going to be looking at is exactly the same as the Windows app except it was written in Swift using the Mac libraries as opposed to the Windows version which was written in C Sharp using the .NET framework because it was running on a Windows computer. So the app we're going to be looking at in this video is going to be identical to the app we looked at in the Windows version of this series because that makes comparing the two techniques a lot easier. So you can see the app needs to be compiled, that's why it's red. So what we want to do is make sure it's on the release scheme first. You can see build configuration is set for release. We untick the box that says debug executable. We close that and we're going to click command B. So that's just compiling our app. You can see now our app is here. We want to right click on that. We want to show in finder. We can see our app. So on Windows you double click your exe and that opens up the program. On a Mac you double click your dot app and that opens up the program. But dot exes and dot apps are actually quite different. The dot exe is the actual executable itself. But on a Mac you have to right click. Go to show package contents on your .app file. You want to go to contents and go to Mac OS. And this is the binary on the Mac. So what we want to do is double click on the app and we can actually run it. So here is the app. It's exactly the same as the Windows version. If I click on unlock, you can see it says invalid code. The unlock code you supplied is not valid. That's exactly the same as the Windows version. If I type in anything into the box, it gives us the same error. But if I type in one of the valid codes, for example, and click unlock, you can see it says unlock and the text box and the button disappear. So just like in the Windows version, I'm going to be modifying this so that this if statement is changed from a comparison to a not equals. So you can see here, if we go to the storyboard, this is our interface for our app. It's very simple. It's the exact same as the Windows version. If I go to viewcontroller.swift, that is our code. That's where our code stored. It's like the form1.cs file in the Windows version. So the first thing we do is just create the button, the text box and the label. Then we create an array that stores the valid unlock codes, just like we did in the other video. And then here, what we do is we loop through all the codes. We check if the value of the text box is equal to one of the codes. If it is, we say that the uh, code is valid and we unlock the program and we exit out of the function. And then if it's not valid, we just tell the user that with a message box down here. When the button's clicked, we run the unlock app method, just like we did in the Windows version. And then we run this method here. So let's have a look inside our executable. So here's our executable here and what we're going to do is we're going to use a special command on Mac called strings and that's going to let us view all of the strings inside the executable. To have access to the strings command you need to install Xcode and then you need to install the Xcode developer tools. I'm not going to show you how to do that because that's really easy to do. You download Xcode from the Mac App Store and you can download the Xcode developer tools by going to Xcode and going to preferences going to components and then it'll be one of the components if you haven't already downloaded it. But once you have Xcode developer tools installed, you want to have your executable in a folder, you want to go to terminal and you want to CD into that folder. So here I am in this directory, if I ls you can see we have one file and it's called my app. That's this file here. So what I'm going to do is type strings, my app, hit enter and you can see it prints out a list of every string in the executable. So much like before we can see the unlock button string, we can see the unlock box string, the unlock label. We unlock codes, we scroll up and we can see the methods in the application as well. And if we keep scrolling up, then once again we can see our unlock codes. So we wouldn't even need to reverse engineer this app once again. All we'd have to do is enter one of these codes and it would work. So what we want to do now is we want to have a look at all of the methods in the executable. So to do that we want to use another command we get when we download Xcode developer tools. And we want to use the command called otool. We want to pass it a special option called tvv. And then we want to pass it the name of our app. So it's going to be my app. So I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, it printed out what appears to be a load of rubbish. But what it actually is, is every method in the program. And what we want to do is we want to sort of shorten this. So what we're going to do is we're going to run that again. And then what we're going to do is use the vertical bar. And that allows us to run another command. And we're going to say grep, which lets us reduce our output. And we're going to look for the word unlock. Just because we're looking for something that will help us get through the unlock code. So we're going to try our luck and assume that there's a method with the word unlock in it. So if I hit enter now, you can see the output we got was a lot shorter. And because I made the app myself, I know that there's a method called unlock app. So what I'm going to do is just run this again and change this to unlock app. And now you can see that the output got even shorter and now it's only two lines long. You can see that there's a method here and this method is our unlock app method minus the first underscore because there's an underscore added. So what we want to do is copy this method without the first underscore 
and that is the method name as it's stored in the executable. And now what we're going to do is run our app through a debugger. So we're going to use the debugger called LLDB. Once again, that comes with Xcode developer tools when you install that. And we're going to tell it to attach to my app. So now you can see we're attached to my app. And what we want to do is disassemble a function. So we want to say disassemble. We want to pass it the minus B flag. And then we want to pass it the minus N flag. The minus N flag just allows us to pass a specific function to disassemble. We could disassemble our main function like this. So as you can see, there's our main function completely disassembled. But what we want to do is disassemble that function we just found and we want to paste it in here. So what I've done is just made it a bit bigger and I've made the font a bit smaller so we can fit more in. But as you can see, the, uh, the binary does still contain some English. You can see there's the string unlocked, which is the string we show to the user whenever they enter the correct code. So we're in the right function somewhere. We can see a reference to unlock label. We can see a reference to unlock button. We can see set enabled, which is, and if we go back to the code, that's the way we disable our unlock box and our unlock button whenever the user is let into the program. And if we scroll up again, we can see there's the unlock code you supplied is not valid. We can see invalid code, keep scrolling up. We can see a reference to string value. String value, if we go back here, you can see is used to set the string in the label and it's used as part of our comparison. So we could be getting close. And what we can actually do is look for a specific command called CMP, which stands for compare. And we can see if we go to the assembly page, we can see that the command CMP is used to compare two values. And that sounds like something we would use in an if statement, because you can see here, we're comparing the value on the left to the value on the right. So a good thing to look for is a CMP instruction. And we can do that if we just say command F, we look for CMP and we hit enter. So we know that the uh, instruction we want to look for is going to be near the end of the program. So we're just going to hit enter until we get near the end of the program. And we can see we are quite close to the bottom of the program and we can see a reference to viewcontroller.swift. So we could be in the right place. If we scroll up, you can see this is the start of the function unlock app. And you can see nowhere in the function anywhere higher up does a comparison take place. And what we also see is swift.string. So this gives us a good indication that this comparison is most likely this double equals. So what we want to do is we don't want to change the comparison. We want to change this instruction directly below it because you can see here jump if not equal is that instruction and that instruction corresponds to we hope this double equals. So we want to invert that. So what, what's the opposite of jump if not equal is obviously jump if equal. So we want to change J N E to J E. And that will essentially be the same as changing that double equals to uh, not equals or so we hope anyway. So let's try that first. We can see this is the jump of not equals command. And what we want to do is copy this beside it. This is the hexadecimal value beside it. We want to copy that. We want to open up our hex editor. The one I'm using for this video is called Hexfiend. I'm going to put a link to that in the description as well. And what we want to do is open up our binary. So we want to go to open path and we want to paste in the path of our binary. So we'll go to finder and we'll just drag the binary in here. We'll click open and there we have it. Our binary is open. So I just made this a bit bigger to make it easier to read. And what we're going to do is we're going to click find. We're going to go to find again. And here we can paste in the hexadecimal value we want to find and we can replace it with something. So you can see here we have 0F85B800000. And if we look directly below it, you can see there's a JE, which is a jump if equal to. The only difference between the first two hexadecimal numbers is the 85 becomes 84. So essentially that's what we want to change. We want to change this 85 to an 84. So back in Hexfiend, we want to paste in our hexadecimal value we want to look up. We want to paste in the value we want to change it to. And what we want to do is change this 85 to 84. So we'll delete that and we'll say 84. So what we want to do is click enter. And you can see we just saw the big yellow line and there's the part of the program we're looking for. So now what we're going to do is click replace. And there you can see this grayed out, which means we need to save it. And what we'll do is we will save it as my app patched. And we'll go back to our folder. We have my app and we have my app patched. If I double click on my app, so here is my app. If I click unlock now with nothing entered into the box, you can see it says unlocked because what we did was converted that double equals into a not equals. Now it will accept anything as a valid uh, unlock code. If we try my app, we click unlock. Nothing happens because we didn't enter a valid code. You try my app patched again. and I click unlock, 
it unlocked successfully. So hopefully that was interesting and hopefully it gave you a sort of basic overview of how reverse engineering programs actually works. It was a very basic overview. There's a lot of other things we can do. There's a special program called Hopper that actually makes this process a lot more simple. That makes this process a lot easier, but it costs money, so we use the free tools instead. Uh, but hopefully this was interesting. If you find this interesting, you might want to watch the Windows version of this tutorial if you haven't already, because it's slightly different. We're using different programs because it's on a different operating system. Uh, but that's it for this video. Don't forget to like our page on Facebook. The link to that is in the description. And we're also on Twitter. The link to that is also in the description. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.